Saturday the 25th. I know. Here you go, Saturday the 25th. Here you go, Saturday. Saturday, I'm there. 25th, right? How are you doing? Saturday 25th. Alrighty. Hey, Richard, what's going on? 25th? Yes, of course. Saturday 25th. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Saturday 25th. Okay. Saturday 25th. Saturday 25th. Alright. Social commentary here when everybody gets together. So, it's like Thomas Wolfe once said, you got to take that first step before you go ahead and make the whole move, okay? Uh, what we do here is we make the first step. When people get in together having a good time, enjoying themselves, and getting away from everyday problems of life. What do you think it is? I think it's all about the rhythm and the love. This is and what you can do with the rhythm. <laughs> House culture, to me, is about the music foremost. It's also a gathering of people where financial status, color, race, has no bearing on it, the dance floor. It has no bearing on the overall vibe of a club or anything. It's the, one of the few places in the world where that stuff does not matter. If you want to get down to where the vibe and the music all started, we should go to Chicago. a mid-tempo funky groove you got your uh, your deep house or garage which is more soulful more, more vocal oriented you've got your, your trance which is basically ambient dance music you have your tribal which basically uh, incorporates African uh, percussion you know tribal patterns similar to a house beat you have your breakbeat techno which is basically that it incorporates uh, instrumental breaks from uh, rap and like funk records You've got your uh, your hardcore techno or Gabber House, which is German, which is very fast, um, the fastest dance music around, sometimes obnoxious. Um, and you have your Progressive House, which is uh, is pretty new, started off in England, which is basically its house. It's a little faster than normal house with some uh, slight techno influences, and um, that would basically uh, cover all the music associated with the rave scene today. Frankie Knuckles was playing this older music, they would say, if a song like that was played at a party, people would say, oh, that's a house cut, because it was something that he would play at the warehouse, like, say, Lolita Holloway, for one of her songs, or First Choice, or something with a Philly sound. They would say, that's a house cut. So um, this went on for a while, and they, that term house was out, like, in 81, like I said, 81, 82. They used to say that's a house cut because it was something that they would play at the warehouse, even once the warehouse closed down. So when I started DJing at this place called The Candy Store in 1984, me and another DJ, we put together a promotion called House Music Only, where we were just playing nothing but old house cuts. And um, it went over real well. And next thing you know, everybody's in the city is hanging posters saying they're throwing a house music night. And everything became house, house, house this, house that. And at the same time, a bunch of DJs, including myself and Jamie, um, Jamie Principal actually wasn't a DJ, but he was one of the first, I think he probably made the first house record. When I, was, I remember when I was DJing at the candy store, there was a song called Your Love. That was like the basis. What I used to do though is, like for the choirs and stuff at the church I would play, you know, there, I would bring up a mixture of like R&B into gospel music, which was um, at the time kind of taboo, but got used to it. So, I don't know, it was like, I got tired of, I guess, with church music, it seems like you're restricted. So, I started branching out, doing my own thing. And I guess I just evolved into doing like, what was, see at that time it wasn't called house music, it wasn't called anything. Everybody was just doing like, what we felt. When, when this thing first started, like when, no, you, when I first started Metroplex, and uh, because Chicago is like it's really close to us, and we, we would drive back and forth to Chicago a lot. And at the time, no UFOs 
which was my first release on Metroplex, was like the only domestic record that they played in the mix shows in Chicago, because we didn't have mix shows in Detroit. And that's why I think things kind of started happening in Chicago first before Detroit, because we didn't have uh, any support from radio. You know, we didn't have mix, I mean, they had like five mixers on the radio in Chicago, we didn't have anybody. So we would actually drive to Chicago just to hear mix shows and, and hear the music. And No UFOs was like the only domestic record that was played on the program. You know, I mean, at, at, at that time, it was, uh, wasn't a lot of dance music in America. So, you know, they rely heavily on imports. The responsibility of a DJ is basically to have a continuous groove going, um, basically just like one big song. And uh, how they do that is in a mix. Once the mix is completed, you're basically looking through your records to find another record to keep that groove going. Um, and it's good to know your music too, because if you don't know your music, you're either going to bring up the energy level or you're going to drop it. So you want to keep a groove going, you want to keep the energy level at a, at a, at a certain level. Either you want to bring it up or drop it, or you want to keep it at the same level. So what's going through my mind is basically looking for the next record to, uh, to keep in with that idea. Yep. They entertain people just like a football player entertains people by playing and they get yeah. mega bucks. You know, so a DJ is the same way. We entertain people by playing other people's music as well as their, your own. And that's the same as, you know, being a, an athlete or being a television celebrity or something. Um, I'd like to see... Uh see people just get off on the music and, and leave the drugs aside. Uh, I've had my experience with them playing around and, uh, you know, it's, rave is all the drug you need. The music is just incredible. I mean, it gives me the, the, the biggest high. I can have a, you know, a crappy day and, and, you know, get in there and, you know, get behind the tables and go off on rave and it just, I mean, it's the ultimate high. It just gets you going. I don't know why ecstasy is, really just seems drug. Ecstasy um, is a beautiful thing. The news media has turned it into a negative thing. There's going to be there's drugs everywhere. The lawyer down the street, the lawyer you get uh, to uh, get you out of jail or whatever. You know, he does cocaine. Everybody does drugs. Seven deaths within the last several years are attributed to, to ecstasy or associated with ecstasy. Meanwhile, what about the 250,000 yeah. deaths a year that are, that are attributed to alcohol or the 150,000 deaths a year that are attributed to cigarettes? Or, the two yeah. biggest killers, man. And they're legal. Alcohol kills and five times many people as <laughs> all illegal drugs combined, but you don't hear about that on the news. <laughs> You know, but the news comes to a rave, and what do they focus Tabloid, on? Tabloid. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's drugs, 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 seven deaths, seven deaths. Damn, seven deaths, man. Pe more people die a year from falling in that fucking bathtub, man. It's really amazing to be in a room uh, at a dance event with everybody on ecstasy. I think if everybody tried ecstasy once, with doctor's uh, permission, and if you have any pain problems, or any type of like that, I'm not saying everybody should go out and do it. I mean, if you have um, any disorders or anything like that, but I think the world will be a much more beautiful place. And that's part of what's going on right now. Well, it's called ecstasy or MDMA. Its formal name is methylene dioxymethamphetamine, which is a mouthful, and that's why it's called MDMA. Who knows where it actually came from the very first time it got into use? 
the story seems to point to synthetic chemists working in the clandestine industry and ecstasy appeared and was tried and became popular for a short period of time, more or less 10 years ago. And it was curious because at that time it was not formally listed on the DEA drug enforcement lists of banned and forbidden substances. And it was really a technical issue. This was a designer drug prepared by a chemist somewhere and technically it wasn't on the list but for all practical purposes it was very similar in chemistry to drugs that we do know and so its effects although different from some others were were of interest to the scientific community the drug itself it's, it's a curious mixture it's really not a pure psychedelic drug like LSD which is the classic psychedelic drug and it's not a pure stimulant like amphetamine. It's a mixture of the two. It has some of the properties of a psychedelic and some of the properties of a stimulant. So as a stimulant, it energizes people. It makes them feel <coughs> up and ready to go and full of energy. Um, it alters mood. It alters perception. It tends to make people feel close, closer together, and more together and sort of with it. And then its psychedelic properties are to, are they, they alter one's perception of uh, the environment. It heightens sensory awareness. It can make sounds appear different, sometimes distorted in a pleasant way. And it makes time blurry. Not quite sure what time it is and where you are at the moment. But these kind of effects last for minutes, hours and then they pass, and it's over. You don't know where you are with the toxicity. You can take it, and first of all, you usually don't take it multiple days at times in a row because you get tolerant to it and the effects wear off. Moreover, when you take it a lot, you're more at risk, even though you stay at the same dose, you're more at risk to have very unpleasant side effects. And who is going to get those unpleasant side effects? And when they're going to come is really totally unpredictable. What, what are some of those side effects? Well, the worst thing is that you can have an acute, generalized toxic reaction and die. There seem to be a few things missing, you know, i.e. like alternative health uh, conscious beverage, uh, so, you know, selection. Just like the, the choice was quite minimized to a Coca-Cola Budweiser kind of, you know, Marlboro diet thing. And it wasn't quite grooving with me. So I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool since we're like staying up all night dancing and like really kind of like purifying and getting in touch and having a quite, you know, spiritual kind of trip to have lots of, you know, something else going on. So we started to make our cosmic, cosmodelicious, fruity, tangy think drinks and, um, and then kind of caught on. That it has many, many, many vitamins and amino acids and minerals and as a base and things like that as a base. And then on top of that, it has some important ingredients to actually help memory, um, focusing power, and overall like brain functioning in the brain, like brain oxygenators and kind of increasing the blood flow. Choline stimulates your pituitary gland and helps with the neurotransmitters. And ginkgo biloba, which is the oldest species of tree known to humankind on this planet. And um, the leaves are shaped like a brain. And it's actually, you know, <gasps> are they really? And, yes, they are actually. And, they, and they, the that. Chinese have known for ages that they've been, you know, good for brain stimulation and cerebral functioning. So that was Supersonic Cybertonic, hence the name Supersonic Cyber, for, to do with the mind. Tonic. Personally, uh, as a DJ, I don't really like nitrous a whole lot because it takes away from my dance floor. People seem to, when there's a tank, it's like a magnet. And uh, I don't know, I, it's disappointing to me when it, it hurts the overall energy of the party, but that's the DJ's perspective. Drugs. <laughs> There's always the drugs, but not not me, of course. But, but everyone around me is always the drugs. Um, you know, there's the ecstasy, pot, acid. Uh... Are you taking any of those? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> never. One thing I want to say to people that people that want to do drugs that are gonna try. Just make sure you know what you're doing if you're even going to do it. And don't do anything in excess, excess like, oh, I want to be better than my friends. I, I mean, 
to me, I would say just say no to it because if you can't come to a rave and have a good time without being on drugs, then like I said, you shouldn't be there, especially at Storm Rave, because that's not why we devised it. We devised it to bring groups of people together that wouldn't hang out on, together, and they did do that. And then the media wants to come in and say, oh, these kids are all on drugs. Like, I, like we said, the drugs are everywhere. Laura, they are also known as raves. And the future. The future. Secrets of the underground clubs. The future. They are also called raves. But what seems to be sophistication is often deception to lead kids into believing it's all on the up and up, often far from the truth. Raves. A huge party. Go on all hours of the night, sometimes legal, sometimes not. And to draw even more kids into the race, seeing the marketing of these all-night clubs is getting real sophisticated. Perhaps too much so for many teenagers. What has made it look like one big happy party can be and has been a path to self-destruction and death. basically to their ratings. They're slaves to their ratings, and they, they can't admit that. And they try to pass off what they, they offer every night as news when it's, when it's basically a half hour variety show of, of uh, you know, popping from a little bit of tragedy, a little bit of love story, a little bit of uh, quirky news, all in a nice neat package for, for, you know, the guy who just got home from work, you know, so he doesn't have to think too much or realize that the world's in such a shambles. And, uh, so screw them, you know, what they have to, what do they have to say is so pointless. Um, I really would like to thank uh, 48 Hours for putting on that LSD special because uh, we had a rave the week after and we got an extra thousand people just curiosity seekers that probably watched the show because they didn't look like people that normally be at a rave, but that's probably another thousand will show up next time. That's another thousand to show up next time dressed in little sockets and baggy clothes. Yeah, I think that uh, the media, of course, is using sensationalism to try and to try and hype up their stories to make it a little more interesting. Um, you know, shows in like 48 Hours are, are famous for that kind of thing. The first thing, the first thing they're going to bring to light are, are the negatives, so that of course all the you know housewives or whatever uh, people that are sitting at home are <laughs> are going to be more interested in the story. Because, oh my God! Look at this drug use. Um, look. look Simple, this is horrible. And, uh, but the, you know, the media never, at least I have never seen a, uh, a story that's, that's really dealt with uh, the positives of the race, really what it's all about. The little bit of press, that, the, the press that raves did start to get on a national level and people getting to hear about it in magazines and see it on TV helped in a sense because all of a sudden people will come and check you out because they've seen it on TV. That helped in a sense, but, and now it's, it's way past that now, but. Yeah, I had a friend of mine in Memphis who called me up. This guy's about 40 years old, and he, he had seen one of the original Inside Edition things on the Rays. And he called me up and says, yeah, I just saw this thing. And I thought I was gonna have to get real defensive and say, well, yeah, but it's really like this. And he goes, he goes, no, 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 you misunderstand. I just wanna know where I can find one. Laughing gas has come to characterize the race. You take a hint of it, and you suck it in, and it's just like you want the biggest smile in the world. Nitro, anything you need, you know, there if you want it. The kids over there sucking in nitrous oxide tanks and stuff like that. Because, I mean, to me, nitrous oxide was something you put in a car to go faster. And 
they're like inhaling this stuff. Um, that's pretty bizarre to me when you think about it, you know. That's the funniest part of it, is that the nitrous is the one thing that we don't encourage. You know, but there are some promoters out there who a guy comes up to him with a tank and says, listen, I'll give you 50% of the profits. Let me come in with my tank. And they say, you know, come on in. They see the dollar signs, but they don't see what's really going on. They don't see it hurting the scene at all. You know, we got we got these people, these kids that are, you know, they're, they're running around promoting, you know, look what I got. I got four color flyer, I got free nitrous, you know, happy E Day is the name of my club, you know, or it's exciting, you know, with the big X on it. It's like what happened to DJs, you know, Doc Martin or you know, and everybody. And you know, this is what we're providing. Great sound, great music, great lights. Instead we're providing nitrous, you know, or you know, or is NO2, however they want to subliminally put it, you know, and ecstasy and acid and you know, and they're just counting how much money and then you know the good promoters don't won't allow nitrous. I got started in this scene along with my original partner, Randy, because, you know, the clubs have been going out for a long time in Los Angeles, long before we were ever even going out, but they were, we were just tired of the same music, it didn't seem like it was progressing, you know, or changing, it was hip-hop and, and 70s and disco or whatever, you know, and it was, it was the same thing over and over again. Obviously there's new tracks coming out, but it's just the same stuff. We were, um, we were into other things as well as that, and, and the, the acid thing was just starting and the house music and stuff had been going on for a little bit, but it wasn't getting that much notice, and we were really into it. We, that's what we really liked. And so in a backwards way, we, we became promoters because no one else was playing that, so we had to promote our own parties to play the music that we wanted, and so we became DJs and promoters at the same time, which is in almost a good sense because to me it gives more credibility to the, you know a promoter that's actually a DJ. To me, I would, I'm much more interested DJing for someone like that or, or being involved with someone that, that's really into the music. Because that, to me, is what it's all about. Well, that's the whole difference between my rave and the other raves, is that my raves are going to be better. That's the whole thing. I mean, sure, I mean, these other places, they don't have it, and they're all into their whatever thing, but they're blowing it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I think that people would, would like this better. I think they want to drink, you know? And I, look, what I'm going to do is give them the opportunity to drink. I got a liquor license, that cost me a lot of money. I had a full strength to get it, and, and it's gonna pay off for me in the long run. Why would you wanna go to a club, let me ask you, if you can't drink, unless you're a complete nerd who doesn't party, doesn't drink, or doesn't do anything. Promoters that don't have any idea what's going on, they go to loan sharks to get the money. They borrow, you know, $30,000, $40,000 to do a show. It ends up flopping because nothing was done right. They didn't know how to do it. And they end up loaning, uh, owing these loan sharks their life. Well, you know, you don't get anything for free. You know, they come to me and they say they need something and they gotta agree with me because, you know, I mean, I'm not a bank, you know, I don't got money just growing out of my ass or something like that. You know, if someone wants some fucking money, they gotta have, you know, be willing to give up, give up something. So, a little bit of interest, maybe some trade or whatever what they got. You know, that's the way it usually works. And most of the time, you know, we get paid. We don't got a problem with that. I mean, knock on wood, of course. We never have any problems. It's just business. It, it goes on for months. You know, we start planning something two months ahead of time, at least two or three months usually. You have to search out the venue, find the venue, permit the venue. And you have to, you have to think who you want to have. You can hire DJs out of state from, you know, around the, your local scene. You have, uh, you, you need people to pick them up from the airport. You have to hire people, the lighting, the sound, the lasers, you know, the people, the, uh, all the concession people, who do you want there? The smart bars, the, the water, who's doing that, taking care of that? Who's the security people, who's doing that? You, you have to, down to like the bathroom showing up, who's gonna be there to meet the people that set up the bathrooms? Who's bringing the bathrooms <laughs> to set up? 
um, you have things, and then, then there's all the promotional aspects, you know, you, three months, two months ahead of time, you have to have flyers out, you have to have, are, are we going to do posters, are we going to do this size, that size, full color, that color, what magazine ads, you have to, that has to be like two months ahead of time, because the magazine comes out a, a month before the event. Here at ANA Graphics, we're an international design studio. Uh, we do high impact graphics for the progressive dance scene. We have five full-time designers that do all of our designs. Uh, we do about 40 designs a week for um, general dance events that happen across the country. The type of applications that we use is uh, centered around all high impact graphics for 3D modeling and, and for filters, for textures. We use Stratavision 3D, Infinity 3D, Add Depth, Swivel, Ray Dream Designer, Photoshop, and Freehand, Illustrator, Quark Express, everything that is necessary to be able to convey that idea that the promoter wants into something that makes it look like the party's gonna go off. What we'll do for a big job is we'll take about 100 boxes, depending on the size of the venue, um, the whole system consists of speakers, amp racks, processing, and the DJ. The DJ sends us a signal, which we send through the processing. We'll set the amplifiers right at the clip level, set a compression threshold right there, squash the signal, let it run all night long. This, this system will generate almost 130 dB at the center floor dance point, and will suck up in excess of 300 amps at any, at any given point in the night. here with an edge that only kind of a hipster would understand. Not your average Joe. Crazy kids. You see some of these kids at the race? Who dresses these kids, man? I mean, when we started, they were dressed normal. Now it's like, it's a weirdo contest. Who could be? I got the sock hat that drags three blocks with me, you know? It's like, yeah. Make sure that the door is taken care of. I just want to make sure that Cassandra is here and she's got everything taken care of. She's been introduced with all the security. The main guys are out there. I want to make sure that Ken's here with the guest list. Make sure that that's taken care of. He's been introduced with all the security so they know like he says someone's okay to come in, they're okay to come in, there's no arguments. And the other main thing is the DJ. I just want to make sure that the DJ lineup is written and posted on the table so there's no arguments, no one's being in fights over who's DJing when, what's going on. Um, the band is coming out at 2 o'clock, so we'll try and get that straightened out. Make sure that whoever, who's ever DJing knows that they have to stop at 2. There's no big complaints with that. posted at all the different exits, making sure that no one's coming in, obviously, everyone's checking for the bands. Um, outside, make sure that the security is not being overbearing, but making sure that the people aren't hanging out in their cars, no one's drinking. I just don't want any problems with, you know, the police coming by or whatever. I don't want anyone out there drinking, being stupid. Just make sure they park, they come in, everything is done, you know, they, they get patted down, but it's done in a nice way, it's really good. Um, basically, I'll just give you the schedules for the DJs and that stuff quality stuff and that my, my stuff is gonna be better than you know some of the other clubs in the area you know, as far as power and performance. Yeah it's all it's all good stuff. Okay. I mean because if it sounds like shit it's gonna kill me. Yep.
job does get stressy. It is stressful, you know, you, you finish setting up, it may have taken two days to set up, you know, you, you hopefully finished at 8 o'clock when you're ready to open at 10, often you're not finished till 9.59, and then you open at 10 and you're sitting there, okay, it's 10 o'clock, where are the people? What's up? Hey, how you doing? Good. Is everything set up? Ready to go? What time is it right now? Well, ready? Ready to go. Uh, A lot of people that are still around now were the ones that were, you know, the originators. You know, everyone that you see now, you saw back then. A lot of people that you never saw back then that came in are not around now. It's like, why? You know, the facts are there. They don't know what it's about. People who know that what it's about are still around now because they're in it for one thing. You know, that's to make things happen the right way. Good crowd, everybody was yeah, good. Yeah, You know, people weren't sitting outside in the parking lot, which they usually do every night. Everybody was good. Yeah, so it's totally peaceful, too. Everything was going good? Everything was good? Yeah. I see totally everybody that comes to the door, they're all, like, smiling, like, you know, they weren't, like, you know, aggro or anything. They're just all happy. Because of you. I, 
You guys, you treat people nice? No, it's, it's really true. You started out. You started out and like, it just continues. You know what I mean? That's why I'm so worried about the parking lot. I want people to come in. Okay. They're treated nicely. They're searched, but they're treated nicely. Yeah, the parking lot was good. They got them out of the parking lot and into the club. Not tiny security, it was, they were really good. They were new tonight too, it was good. I, I was really worried about that, whether it was going to go. It was excellent, excellent, everything's excellent. This is perfect. Remember what, where this came from, why we're doing this, why it started, where it's all at, and, and, and don't let all that commercialism and sellout come into it. It's more than just a party. It takes a lot to, uh, to establish you know, the, the whole feeling and the whole lifestyle, because rave, after all, is a lifestyle. It's not, it's not just a party. You know, rave is a noun, but it's also a verb, and it's also a state of mind. The music is the essence of it all. It's, it's, it has the ability to, to break through barriers that were put up for, like, since the birth of these individuals, you know? I've seen mothers and little children and, you know, grandparents and everybody dance together and actually like experience something together it's 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 amazing and the music i mean there's so many different aspects of the music you know house music was just everything i mean i remember the parties staying out until you know just going out at one o'clock in the morning getting in trouble for coming at home at nine o'clock in the morning because that's like when when the energy at a house party is going you have no sense of time, and the next thing you know, it's like 9 o'clock in the morning, and you feel like a vampire. And with the major labels, they're so, they're really fucked up, because they have, like, really good house producers remixing every record that comes out. Every record that comes out, they have, you know, Masters at Work, they have uh, David Morales, a good house producers do it, but then they don't, you, they, you don't hear them giving Masters at Work a record deal, you don't hear them giving David Morales a record deal. What they do is they give these whack, you know, they give you a whack track, they pay you a flat fee, like, you know, whatever, 15 grand to fix the fuck up, and then that's it, you know, they, they, that's all you ever hear from them. So, it's, you know, it's fucked up. The whole thing is fucked up. Hopefully one day... And the record sells, you know, because of the house mixes. All the DJs buy it, and, and you know, nobody nobody even listens to the ace, the whack A side or whatever it is, you know. Everybody buys for the B side. No, they and then, complain about it. Yeah, and they complain oh, about man, it. Oh, you, 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 you need you know, the vocal, man. Yeah. They go, man, they gotta use that shit anyway. Of course we didn't use the vocal, man. <laughs> it may appear to be a, a young person's sound, or it may appear that the young people are really into it, but the young people are the ones that buy the records, you know, and they're the ones that party all night long. So, um, it's just, to me, it looks like something that's here. It's gonna last. Just like people used to talk about rap, and it was only here for a little while, and it's still here. I see that the best thing about this music right here is, um, the DJs that are actually going out to the clubs and spinning the music and, and really making the scene happen are the same people that are actually making the records most of the time. They're, those are the same people that are actually making the music that's being heard. And I think it's really cool that a DJ on a Friday night can go into a club like myself as a, as a DJ and spin to the crowd and, and really, uh, you know, create a whole vibe and, and, and push the music. And then on the Saturday afternoon, spend the whole Saturday, Sunday, maybe the whole week banging out tracks, you know, to, to play the, the following weekend, you know, on, you know, to putting up the music out, you know. So it's like the whole thing. It's like an inside scene, you know. The DJs are the producers and are the actual talent that 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 are, are making the music that the people are, are hearing. Through electronic dance music, you can really understand life and everything. And I know, speaking for myself, it's just like I've been going to pubs for a long time, and just lately, you know, just so clued into everything, just with the way this music is like affecting me, you know. And I'm not under it communicates in so many different frequencies and so many different forms that no one can really monopolize it and no one ever will be able to and as far as I'm concerned it's just rock and roll still you know I enjoy the, the psychedelic experience of raves, I enjoy the, the visual stimulation, the, the audio stimulation of the sound. Yeah, we, we party here pretty much 24 hours a day anyway, so now it's a place to go have a good time. Party till morning, after morning, afternoon. The music's really great all night long. It doesn't have to start with any, 
it doesn't, it just has no confines. That's what it's all about here. We've seen people, any color, any kind of belief, coming together and being under one roof without any violence and going all night long happy and just being together. Talk about the force. This is the force. It's the rave scene. It's the power in and of itself. I guess at night there, I'm just uh, trying to help you guys have a good time. But just remember, you, the raver, are the most important part of the scene. And uh, help it evolve. Take care. Peace. create hallucinatory and um, visionary uh, mind change experiences with uh, using electrons. Uh, of course, that excites me and uh, something I've been waiting for for 30 years.
What up? This is Maddie Silver from the New York City Ray Foundation. Why not believe in me? What up? This is Maddie Silver from the New York City Ray Foundation. Why Love thy name. Me? Me? This is Maddie Silver from the New York City Ray Foundation. Why not Coming to you me? with a unity. It's Maddie Silver from the New York City. It's Maddie Silver from the New York City Ray, Fa Ray Foundation. I like to get across to America is to love thy neighbor. This is. All right, so here we go. Tom Bouillon. This is Maddie Silver from the New York City Ray Foundation, and I'd like to get across to America to love thy neighbor. Is that what you were gonna yeah. do? Yeah. Don't do it, man. Yeah, fuck it. Come let's, on, do let, it. Let's let him do it. Go ahead, Frankie. Well, how you doing? I'm Frankie Bones, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I'm the sheriff. And uh, if you don't play this rave game the right way, I want you out of town by sundown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing? This is Michael from Pleasure Force Productions, Toronto, straight out of the hardcore. Fucking suck. Whoa, Jesus Christ, stop it, stop it. No, 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 I fucked it up. One sec. No, I wanted to say one thing. I just stopped it for a sec. Hi, I'm Michael, coming out of the hardcore of Toronto, Canada. I'm with Pleasure Force Promotions, and we're a rape promoter, and we know how to do it the right way. Keep it underground. Ciao. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Nigel Richards from the Horizon Group in Philadelphia, and I'd like to say thanks for creating the scene and keeping it going, and thanks for coming. <laughs> that was stupid. Go ahead. I gotta collect myself. <laughs> what do I think the whole scene's about? Well, the whole scene's about... It's about getting a bunch of people together, collecting minds together, doing things. I gotta use that buzzword, unity. I mean, everybody's gotta do that. Rave is all the drug you need. The music is just incredible. I mean, it gives me the, the, the biggest high. I can have a, you know, a crappy day and, and, you know, get in there and, you know, get behind the tables and go off and rave. And it just, I mean, it's the ultimate high. It just gets you going. I still didn't hit that like a one. You know, I, I really do. I love all of you, you know? Sometimes we all get lost in our own things, but, I mean, love is really the only thing that's gonna really keep us together. Just don't forget your, your brothers and sisters. They're doing it for the wrong reasons. You should do it, you know, you want to give something back to the kids, you want to give them something that they're going to actually go for. You, you expose them to a, to a whole new atmosphere where they can actually escape from the realities of the world, you know, the, all the problems with, with unemployment, with, with war, with AIDS, with, you know, with everything, and you bring them into a place where they can go and they can forget about those problems and they can all be dancing for a positive, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> what's, on, what's on my mind after a mix is completed is basically looking for the next record to keep in with that groove that, uh, that one song came you know about. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Take two. You did that, man. House culture to me is um, 
foremost about the music, putting the music first above all. But it... take three. <laughs> House music. Oh, take four. We're gonna get up there. Seven's a lucky number. I'm oh, moving. Just keep on singing, brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, woof, baby. Okay. House culture to me is foremost about the music. It's also the only the only kind of movement whoa, whoa. where you can set a napkin on fire in someone's house and step on it. Okay, the house is burning down now. The house is on fire. Okay, we're not gonna use that. That light, that is definitely out. Okay, we've got a small fire burning here. I'm gonna still keep my cool and tell you about house music. Michael, tell boy. The rancid smell, that's what house music's about. No, if it were for, listen, I want to tell you one thing about this town. It's like they believe in media power. I mean, I, I published a four-page newsletter. And if it weren't for my media power, I would have been 86 from that bar for the rest of my life. But as it was, all I had to do was give the owner of the bar the guy's phone number and... <laughs> cannot go any farther than the millions of people listening to this. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's, you know, as long as it doesn't have any live instruments, you know, we hate live oh, instruments. Yeah. Can't have any yeah. of that. No. no singing, no live instruments, none of that. It has to be all digital. Analog. Yeah. No, no hiss, no, 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 that has to be all recorded Dolby C. And if it does have a guitar, it has to be sampled. Sampled guitar, definitely, yes. And very repetitive, <laughs> very monotonous, lots, lots of boring samples, and witty samples nonetheless, but, you know, very repetitive, and, you know, lots of little techno computer noises. Yeah. But no, you'll, you'll drop in some old stool stuff every now and then, right? Old stool, yes. Old stool is, is very cool to drop in every now and then, you know. There's, there's no real boundaries. Now a peaceful place, as you can tell. Peace, love, unity. Bad show, you know, nobody showed up. You know, the DJs weren't there. They didn't have the right wattage on the lasers or, I don't know, boom, boom, didn't show up with the shredding sound system. I don't know, something stupid like that. And the cops busted it, and he was just sitting there with his hands in his head, just shaking his head. And we just, you know, we come up and, you know, hey, how are you? You know, nice. And he just didn't look good. <laughs> and so after, you know, we talked to him for a couple minutes, he just said that he didn't know if he could get the money. And so we knew a place he could get the money from. And so uh, we put him, <laughs> remember? We put him in the car. <laughs> and uh, we went, to, we just... I don't know, there's oh, a, sorry. there's like a... Very rarely is there ecstasy in Cleveland. The kids really get off and, and have have their mega parties when it's here, but it's not always here. So it's not what the scene is built around, at least not here anyway. Because it's not always available. It's, it's basically really hard to find around here. Uh, every six months, seven months, Somebody shows up from out of town, and there's a batch, there's a bunch. You got some of that shit, send it on through, you know? It's <laughs> like we're just, we're fucking dry up here. <laughs> Hard copy, uh... I can't even find anything right now. Oh, we have all sorts of music here, country and western. Power-wise... <coughs> I swallowed a piece of dust. <coughs> yeah, I get it, I get it. But I love the music. Do you really? Yeah. Really? I mean, it's all about the music. And the drugs. <laughs> And the money. And the money. And the lack of money. And the comps. <laughs> I've got a real soft spot in my heart for comps right now. I just want to throw parties and have all my friends come for free and drink my beer. <laughs> it's like in 10th grade when you have the party at your, uh, at your parents' house. Right. The only difference between the parties at your parents' house in 10th grade was those cost about $300 and these cost about 60000 Yeah. And you want Kool-Aid as your star, fuck you. Oh, no, Steve, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Steve actually was first. Steve, Steve, and Randy, I mean, had the creativity of starting it, and I stole it to make money. 
hi, I'm a DJ. You know, big deal. You play records, you play other people's music. You know, <laughs> who are you? Like a uh, Burt Reynolds smoking the bandit movie, you know, at the end of the show, like, oh, goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine, man.